As a researcher or reader, you might have come across this term DOI every once in a while in journals, research papers, and while submitting one of your own manuscripts. Journals might have written back to you and also commented on it. Initially, it might be really confusing to understand what it is. Hello and Namaste. I am Dr. Ashik Razak, a medical graduate from Nepal and the assistant editor of a few reputed journals in the country. Today, I am going to help you understand everything you need to know about DOIs. This is going to be an elaborate video and I assure you, you will have known everything about DOIs after watching this video. You can skip to any section of this video using the timestamp in the description below. To start with, what is a DOI? DOI is the abbreviation of Digital Object Identifier. To give you an example, this is what a DOI will look like. As you can see, it contains a string of letters, numbers and symbols. This string is unique and is assigned to a published document such as an electronic journal article. Having said that, digital objects are more than just research articles in text format. Digital objects can include images, videos, diagnostic procedures, research data, patient data, audio recording of interviews, data from biochemical analysis or genome sequencing. DOIs can be assigned to files of all of these formats, ranging from .mp4 to .fes. Moving on, why do you need to know what a DOI is? Firstly, your article will receive one when it's published. So it'd be really helpful and convenient if you know what it is and what its applications are. Considering your article has been published, example here in Nature, clicking on one of the recent publications and scanning the page, you'll find a DOI has been assigned to it, which is right here. To demonstrate the same and its application, I'll take you to the Nepal Journal's online platform, nepjol.info. This is the page of the Nepal Journal of Neuroscience. Opening one of the recently published articles, you will notice that it has been assigned a DOI, which is right here. There are a few things when it comes to the format of the DOI, which I will discuss later. You can use the DOI of your published article in your ORCID profile to list out all of your publications so as to add to your digital portfolio. For example, clicking on the ORCID here will take you to the profile of the author. I will make another video to specifically explain and demonstrate what an ORCID ID actually is. You can add all of your publications and their DOIs to this section called Works. Having done this, you'll have all of your published works in one list, which is easier for you to organize and will give your readers and viewers a one stop to read all of your published articles, which will further help demonstrate your field of expertise. Also, you can click on any of these other DOIs, which will directly take you to the page of the journal where the article is located. Secondly, all journals these days ask you to list the DOIs, full text links, PubMed links, or PubMed IDs of all the articles in your bibliography or the reference list. In the reference list, you'll notice that all the references that have been listed here have these links towards the end that read full text, DOI, or PubMed. These are clickable links which when clicked on will take you directly to the article making it easily accessible and convenient. To demonstrate, clicking on this link will take me to PubMed and open this article named The Global Burden of Hemorrhagic Stroke. This is exactly what we're looking for. Different journals have a different style of writing DOIs of the article and the articles in the reference list. For example, Nature writes the DOI of the article in this format. However, in the reference list, it adds links to PubMed, the DOI and Google Scholar in this very format. The Nepal Journal of Neuroscience writes DOI in this format here. And in the reference list, it adds DOIs in the format as specified here, which is clickable. The Journal of KMC writes DOIs in this format. In the references, the journal includes full text DOI and PubMed links, which are included as represented here. And these links are clickable. Now, how to find a DOI of a journal article? First, if you know where the article was published, you have to go to the same platform to check what the DOI of the article is you'll often easily find it mentioned in the page of the article itself. 
If it's not there, check the PDF or any other file that is with the article. It's mostly the same process we went through earlier in this video. After having opened the PDF, quickly scan through the file to check if the DOI has been mentioned anywhere. Some journals mention the DOI in the header, some mention the DOI at the footer and others mention it somewhere in between. To take an example of an article in the BMG, you'll notice that the DOI of the article has been mentioned here in this very format. Just in case it wasn't mentioned here, we'd have opened the PDF of the article. Having opened the PDF of the article, you'll notice that the DOI has been mentioned here in the description, at the footer, and also here on the side. Few journals will also give you information on how to cite the article. This makes things slightly easier in case you need to put up the link anywhere. Also, a few journals have this QR code which you can quickly scan with your phone application and reach the page right away to read the article. If you don't really know where the article was published, you'll have to take some time to find it out. If you have the PDFs of the articles if you've been using citation managing applications and the web browser plugin, it can help you track the DUI of the article. You might be using applications such as the EndNote X9 or Mendeley and those will help you determine what the DOI is. In case that doesn't work either, we have this website called crossref.org. Here in the Crossref website, you have the option of searching the entire website or searching metadata. So if you know the title or author or DOI of a paper but don't have the entire information you need, you can put it here in the search box and hit search. For example, if I only know the title of a paper, I'll quickly copy and paste the title and click search. When I click search, I get a whole list of results that match my criteria. We have the option of filtering the results on the basis of the type of article, year of publication, journal or platform where it was published, publisher and the funder name. With each result, you'll find the details of the authors, date of publication, volume, issue, page number and DOI of the article. When you click on the DOI, it takes you to the page of the article. This is how you find the DOI of the article you have incomplete information about. Why is the DOI important? Mentioning the DOI of an article makes it accessible, verifiable, reproducible, reusable, and interconnected. All these will make the scientific community more transparent to prevent any kind of misconduct or breach of publication structure of a DOI. The style and structure of how a DOI is written has changed significantly over time. Currently, a DOI is correctly written as follows. I'll quickly elaborate on what the string above actually contains by roughly breaking it into four parts to make understanding it simpler. This is the secure transfer protocol. Previously, the syntax HTTP was used. This is the host name. This is the prefix and the code of the registration agency. This is the suffix and the code of the publisher. If you've noticed, the part that changes in the DOI is the prefix and the suffix. To summarize, we have the secure transfer protocol, host name, 10 period registration agency, slash the suffix. To take another example, the prefix here is 10 period 3126, which is the code of Nepal Journals Online. The suffix is the code of the publisher, JKMC being the code of the Journal of Kathmandu Medical College and NJN being the code of Nepal Journal of Neuroscience. The syntax after that is the journal's own style of coding the research paper. How have DOIs changed over time? To enhance consistency and usability, Crossref introduced the display guidelines in 2017. These guidelines introduced two important changes that differ from the previous guidelines. The DX from the domain name part of DUI links has been dropped and the secure HTTPS is used rather than the HTTP. For example, this is a format which is not accepted anymore. Plus, DUIs are now displayed as a full URL link 
in the same form previously demonstrated and are not preceded by DOI column in lowercase or DOI column in block letters. This is format that was previously used but now is invalid. The same is the case here. It is suggested you use a DOI when linking a research work rather than its URL. A DOI is persistent and helps to easily locate an article or document from the citation itself whereas a URL might change over time and often be broken making all the links you shared invalid. However, it is the responsibility of the publisher to update the metadata in Crossref with a new URL. Having said that, the DOIs do function like a URL, are clickable and you can copy paste it to the browser. The Crossref DOI must be displayed as a link because it is both an identifier and a persistent link. It is easier for users when it is displayed as a full link as they can copy it easily. Also, many users don't know what a DOI is, but they know what a link is. Shown here is the format of a DOI and a URL. The URL might change over time, but the DOI is persistent and suggested. The older already existing DOIs will not need replacing as they will be backwards compatible. So DOIs such as these, which confirm to older guidelines, will continue to work indefinitely. Where to apply the display guidelines? In short, the answer is everywhere. We now know that DOIs can be long. So a service, short DOI was introduced aiming to do the same thing as a URL shortening service. For example, for this DOI, the short form is this. However, only one short DOI is created for each DOI and the short DOI returns exactly the same results as the DOI. Short DOIs are not widely used and are not really actual DOIs themselves, which is confusing. To learn more, you can visit the Crossref website. That's all for this video. If this video was helpful to you and if you learned anything new, do hit the like button below and subscribe. It will definitely inspire me to create new videos like this one. Do leave comments to let me know on what topic you want me to create a video next. Also, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you at the earliest. I will be back with another video soon. Until then, stay positive, be safe.